Hey, I'm Tommy, and today I'm going to show you how to build a remote-controlled taser. Why would anyone want a remote-controlled taser? You probably have your own reasons you're watching this video. For me, I'm trying to build an ignition system that's reliable for my remote-controlled ice chest, and it's going to have a built-in flamethrower. I was going to use some nichrome wire, but I found that after hooking it up to my high-power LiPo batteries and flipping the switch, the nichrome wire would heat up and just instantly melt. So it's not gonna really stand the test of time using just hot wire for that. Now there's a few ways you can go about building a remote controlled taser. There's, there's a lot of ways to do it, but one that comes to mind in particular, particularly on YouTube, is a lot of people buy these little boost converters. You know, these little guys right here. Now th these little things are cool and they have um, a pretty impressive output for the amount of effort involved. And I've used them in some of my projects in the past year or so, like my uh, taser gauntlet. I found that after a few months of consistent use, after you use them a lot, they just get really weak. When you first get them, their output looks pretty impressive, but then like just after not too long, they just, they lose power and they kind of, they're really cheap. They're only a couple bucks. I want this build to be like really solid and super powerful. I'm going to be trying to ignite flowing liquid propane. I need something a little bit stronger. So you can get a ZVS driver circuit, which is a zero voltage switching driver circuit and a flyback transformer for pretty cheap on the internet. We're going to start with one of those. And if you want to see the completed project, make sure you're subscribed because it's going to be pretty awesome. The next thing you're going to want to pick up are some 0.47 nanofarad 15 kilovolt capacitors. You get your choice of transmitter and receiver. Generally, the transmitter that you buy will come with the receiver that works with it. And then I found these little 12 volt 10 amp switches. They go from 12 volts to 30 volts. Uh, and up to 10 amps. So that's gonna work perfect for our little ZVS driver circuit. And then you need to find the right batteries. Now finding the right batteries can be kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. I built my own battery out of uh, some 18650 cells. So you can watch a video on how to actually weld together your own battery. I'll have a link to that video somewhere in the description of this one or there'll be a card up here in the corner or something. But you can make your own batteries, it's really not that hard. I made a 16 volt battery for this particular project and now we just gotta start putting stuff together. Also the transmitter and receiver you get doesn't have to be crazy expensive, like meant for flying helicopters and drones and stuff. Uh, this one from Hobby King would work too. I got it for pretty cheap and it has this little side button which will work like really well for this purpose. So just any standard kind of remote would work. This is a three channel receiver and transmitter. All right, so here we are. Yeah, my workbench is a disaster. You want to fight about it? Didn't think so. Okay, so this is the RC switch that I was talking about. This thing is freaking tiny. Uh, for scale, here's that like boost converter thing I was showing you earlier, which is just huge compared to it. It's like the size of half a quarter. They're very small. So here's how they work. It's really intuitive. Uh, the wiring diagram looks really confusing at first, uh, but let me just kind of explain it to you. Here it is. Uh, this is the servo cable, which literally just plugs into your receiver. I have two of these right now. So there's two of them right here. I've got one in channel five and channel six in my receiver. It's got these two red cords coming out. They're both positive. And so this cable here, goes from the positive portion of your battery into the little switch. And then from the switch, it goes to the positive of your load, which would be the ZVS driver circuit or whatever the heck else you're gonna be using. And the negative cord comes out from the ZVS driver circuit into your receiver's ground, and it shares a ground with the negative of your battery, which is like one of these, or in my case, this battery here. So while the wiring is like super confusing, especially if you're new to electronics, uh, once you get it all working, it's really cool. So check it out. And this this crap over here, this is a, uh, a solenoid that I have already wired up the same way. I just added a little Dean's plug onto it so I could easily take it and remove it and stuff. But there's a, an electric solenoid here which will be used to disperse propane. And that's what's using the other switch on my circuit. All right, so now I'm going to plug in my ZVS driver circuit so I can show you what it does. And then I have to power on my receiver. All right, can you see that? You get that nice little plasma arc. Pretty cool. But that's not a taser. So what we need to do is add our capacitors to the circuit. Okay, here we go. This is going to be loud. And 
there you go, that's one way you can build a remote control taser. If you found this video interesting, feel free to give me a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.